One of the most powerful yet poorly understood features of any decent hardware wallet is that you can have multiple software interfaces that allow you to interface with the private keys on a single hardware wallet. Uh, this is something I talked about really briefly in a previous video that talks about different wallet types and something that became really apparent when I was looking at some of the replies on the video that I recently did on our Trezor suite, as well as some of the questions that people were asking on Reddit. So basically what I'll be running through in this video is what it looks like to access a single Trezor using Exodus, Shapeshift, Trezor Suite as well as the legacy Trezor web wallet. And just going to talk a little bit about some of the reasons why you might do this as well as some of the potential issues you might run into in terms of how different software wallets uh, interface with your hardware wallet and will present the crypto in different ways. And before I go any further, it's important to say that this ability to use multiple software interfaces is not a Trezor specific thing. Uh, I'll be using a Trezor Model T in this video and the software I'll be demonstrating with it is mostly Trezor specific, but uh, there are alternative wallets for Ledger as well, especially uh, if you're only holding Bitcoin. You have tons of options with any decent hardware wallet. And if you haven't already done so, hit subscribe and that way you can stay in the loop for content I make to help you find your way in the crazy and often hostile environment that is cryptocurrency. Okay, so if we start with Trezor Suite and just connect the device. And there we go. So it's finished loading everything. We can see it's found about $4.33 worth of crypto and it has found Bitcoin, Litecoin, ETH, BCH and Dash. So it's found all of those things. And if we have a look, we can see all of those accounts uh, here. And we can also see there are two SegWit Bitcoin accounts here as well. So there's two SegWit Bitcoin accounts and there's also a native SegWit Bitcoin account, which is uh, the default now in Trezor Suite. So we'll just close that. So if we just open up Exodus now, so if we just open up Exodus, this is the default screen. And if we connect our Trezor and just give it a second, it'll find it. There we go, we can see it's popped up over here. Where you wanna connect. And there we go. So it's actually been paired and it's found the following uh, cryptos and that much of each one. So they're the five that we saw before. But if we continue to portfolio, you'll notice that the total for the assets is actually different. And specifically that it has not found all of the Bitcoin. And uh, basically the Bitcoin balance that we see here on this one is only the Bitcoin that was in the first SegWit type account in Trezor Suite. And that's because Exodus only supports a single account for each type of crypto and it doesn't support native SegWit at all. The other difference with uh, Exodus is you actually need to enable uh, multiple addresses in that uh, if you leave this off just by default, Exodus will just keep reusing the same Bitcoin address over and over again rather than give you a new one every time. The other thing that's really important to know with Exodus is that once you've got your Trezor connected, you can actually toggle between the software wallet in Exodus and your hardware wallet. And all of the stuff that's stored under this Exodus tab is not secured by your hardware wallet at all. Uh, so it's not enough to simply plug your Trezor in and just keep using Exodus like you were using it before. You actually need to make sure that you have this tab selected so that these accounts you're seeing uh, at, correspond to the keys on your Trezor. So we'll close that. Next, we'll just look at the uh, default Trezor web wallet. That's just wallet.trezor.io. And I'll just connect the Trezor. And there we go. Now the thing to notice here is the uh, default Trezor web wallet only shows you like one crypto at a time. Like you have to select which one you wanna see. But the thing that's really worth noticing is that you're here you will see there are two Bitcoin accounts and the two that the default Trezor web wallet has found are the two SegWit ones. So it finds this one here, which is the same one that Exodus found. It also finds this second uh, Bitcoin SegWit style address and the native SegWit address is nowhere to be seen. Again, because the uh, default Trezor web wallet 
that's wallet.trezor.io, still doesn't actually support native SegWit. And that's an issue in that if you uh, add Bitcoin to native SegWit accounts using either Trezor Suite or Electrum, uh, you will log on to this wallet.trezor.io and you will not be able to see the Bitcoin. They're still there, uh, you just can't see it. And finally, we'll just head over to Shapeshift. And uh, again, we can just connect, we can just select that we want to pair a Trezor and uh, Trezor works really nicely with Shapeshift because KeepKey is just a Trezor clone basically. And here we go. And despite this warning here that says it only supports, Shapeshift only supports account zero for each account, uh, that's actually not correct. So there we go, Shapeshift has loaded and uh, you'll notice that it is detecting all five of the cryptos, but it's uh, detecting more than Exodus did in that it's detecting uh, both of the Bitcoin accounts that are the SegWit type, but it is still not detecting the native SegWit account. So, uh, you know, Shapeshift is displaying more, but not everything. The great thing with all these different software interfaces is you can use them interchangeably in that uh, all of the transactions that you send from one of these software interfaces will all automatically sync back off the blockchain and be represented in all the other ones, even though you've only got a single copy of the private keys on your hardware wallet. The really powerful thing with this is that unlike with a software wallet where you might go importing your seed into say three or four different wallet interfaces, any one of which could just steal your entire stash if there's a bug or a malicious code in there. Uh, when you're using these wallet interfaces with your hardware wallet, you are still able to access your funds in a very secure way and uh, still approve transactions and all that sort of stuff using the uh, workflow that you are familiar with. The biggest thing you need to watch with these alternative interfaces is uh, that you will never need to enter your seed phrase when using them. If you're installing uh, Exodus or trying to connect with Electrum or something else like that and you see something that pops up saying you should enter your seed phrase, do not enter it, you're about to get scammed. All of these wallets will work directly with your Trezor so you just connect them, it detects it and you're away. So again, very powerful feature of a hardware wallet and you aren't locked into a single software interface. And if you're a software wallet user who hasn't yet uh, purchased a hardware wallet and want to help me out in the process, there are actually affiliate links to do that in the description. The important thing to understand here is that all of these software interfaces are representing the same set of private keys that are stored on your hardware wallet. And each one of them doesn't necessarily have to display all of the cryptocurrencies or private keys on your account or even display uh, the same ones in the same way. As you notice with Exodus, uh, you know it will only show you one account at a time and as we saw with everything except for Trezor Suite, uh, there is no native SegWit support there for Bitcoin and that's important to understand. And this is the reason why if you go to the supported coins page on either Ledger or Trezor or something like that, there'll often be a number of cryptocurrencies that are supported by the hardware wallet but that are not supported by the official software interface, requiring you to use a third-party wallet to access those altcoins. One of the advantages of having all these different software interfaces is that uh, you can use software that best suits your uh, situation and level of experience. You know, if you're just starting out, using your Trezor with Exodus is actually a great uh, way to go. It's, it's very simple. Whereas if you're a more advanced user, you might be inclined to try something else. Having access to multiple wallet interfaces is powerful because it gives you redundancy. Redundancy is important because if you're wanting to uh, transact on your hardware wallet and there is like a global outage with your wallet provider, and, and trust me, these things do happen, they have happened, uh, then you can just connect to one of these other uh, platforms and continue to transact as normal. And uh, all your transactions will sync quite happily uh, back to the vendor wallet when they're back online. Uh, it's important in terms of minimizing trust in that uh, it allows you to not necessarily use the same software uh, that was provided by the person who provided your hardware device. And different wallets also allow you to have different features in terms of the level of privacy that you uh, have when you're using them. Things like being able to use Tor or connect to your own node uh, and so on. And for Bitcoin in particular, you know, there's a really wide range of wallets that allow you to do really powerful things like multi-sig and all of that sort of stuff. 
So there you go. I hope that clears things up a little bit and helps you to better understand how your hardware wallet works with different software interfaces. And uh, again, uh, really help you out if you find yourself in a situation where you're wondering why some of your crypto is appearing in one wallet but not another. So uh, yeah, useful stuff to know. I'd also really suggest that uh, if you are someone who has a hardware wallet like a Trezor, it's worth getting familiar with some of the alternative interfaces that work with that, just because uh, it's good to be familiar with how these things work and comfortable with that before finding yourself in a situation where you really want to or need to use one of these platforms uh, under some kind of time pressure where you're more likely to make a mistake. So there you go. Have a try at uh, setting this up, connecting your hardware wallet to some of these different interfaces. And uh, yeah, if you run into any trouble at all, just leave a reply and uh, I'll do my best to help you out. Thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful. Hit like if you think that other people would find this video useful and hit subscribe if you'd like to be kept in the loop about future content I make that helps people stay safe in the crypto space and to recover if they get into trouble. If you have any questions about this video or a topic that you'd like me to cover, just leave a reply.